Hello, in this section we're going to be talking about creating your macros as well as using ECDMX in general. But first, let's talk about the different visual elements that you see here on the screen. First, you have your menu which allows you to create, open, and save your ECDMX menu as well as import it from Show Express. Then, you have your options dialog, your fixture dialog, and your scene dialog. On the right hand side, you have a listing of all the scenes that you have in your venue and double-clicking on any of the scenes will open up the scene dialog with that scene loaded in. Below that you have the all off and reset buttons which we'll get to later and in the middle you have the array of all your macros divided into six pages and up to 384 macros. Now let's give a quick look of the different settings that we have. Currently you could change the transition and hold time for the new steps that you add to each scene and then you can change the default transition types for new channel transitions that you add to each step. And then below that we have a setting for macro mixing which I will turn off but I will explain what it does later on. To add a macro all you need to do is find the button where you want that macro to be placed, right click on it and hit the edit. What you'll see is a new window containing all your scenes on the right hand side and all the scenes that are in the macro on the on the right hand side. Also you'll have a setting or field for the macro name which I will call test. And then you have the cut, move up, move down and play button. I'm going to add a few scenes to this macro. Now it's important to note that the ordering matters. Um, how a macro is processed is all the scenes are played in order. So if you have transitions in two scenes that overlap with each other the transition in the later scene, the one that is lower in the list, will take precedence. So if in the first scene you change the color of a fixture to red, but in the last scene you change it to green, the color will be green when you're playing back the macro. Uh, to actually play back the macro, uh, you just press the play button and the macro will play, uh, which gives you an indication of how the macro will look once you are playing it live. And then you could play it, you could press that button again to fade out the macro. Once you're done, just hit the OK button, and you'll see that the button that you selected changes its appearance, and you have the name uh, written on the button itself. Now, if at a later time you wanted to make changes to the macro or remove it, simply right click on it again and either hit the edit to change or clear to remove it. I'm going to add a few more macros just for test purposes. and I'm actually going to add another one in a different page. Activating a macro is very easy. You just simply press the button and the macro turns on. You'll notice that the button changes its appearance uh, to be pushed in. Uh, this gives you an indication that the macro is currently running. Now if you wanted to go to a different macro, simply click the other button and this macro will activate and all the different fade steps in all the scenes in the macro that was turned off will play. Now if you wanted to turn uh, everything off without pressing a different macro you can simply click the one that's currently playing or use the all off button. The all off button takes all currently active macros and deactivates them which in turn plays all their fade steps. Or you can use the reset button to instantly turn everything off and set all channels to zero. Also, if you have a scene, or I'm sorry, a macro active another page, the page button will give you an indication of this by turning aqua. Now, if we go into the options and turn on macro mixing, what this allows us to do is have more than one macro on at one time. So pressing multiple buttons will not deactivate the previous macros. You might want to use this mode in the case where you want to have multiple things on at the same time but you don't really want to have a lot of macros to do different combinations. It's important to note that to turn everything off you have to use either the all off or reset buttons or manually turn every single macro off. Now if you want to use EasyDMX to another piece of software uh, you need to make sure that EasyDMX is running. The window does not have to be open, it could be minimized. 
but it has to be running or it will not work at all. Also, it's important to note that in the lower left hand corner you have an indication of whether or not your hardware is connected. If your hardware is connected, it will say so here, and you'll see a red light flash on your cord. This concludes this tutorial.